moderator. I do nothing in moderation. <laughs> Nor should you. As you can tell. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> We're glad to be here. I, am, I haven't been in Toronto since uh, the early 80s. You, I did, were you, in a, were you in a play? I was in a play that I did on Broadway, and then the, the national tour opened at the um, uh, Royal Alexander. Oh, God. See, he's a real actor. He's a <laughs> What's left of me? Yeah. Yeah, I look at that stuff in your bio and see all, these, this, all this Broadway that you did. We were just talking about how the backstage here is the cleanest backstage either as a, either of us has ever seen because Charlie was saying that the, the Broadway backstages the toilets yeah you smell the pee just looking at the pictures of it no, there's, there's, there's nothing glamorous about it honest right. to God it's so funny to me this is so clean what the so who, do you guys have questions we're gonna have to do like a Q I think we'll do this Q and A we're gonna do the T and A I want to go on and on about ourselves <laughs> you want T and A or Q and A. <laughs> How about uh, Q&T? <laughs> Questions and titties. How about that? <laughs> oh, okay, I'll start. All right. <laughs> so, uh, anybody's got questions? Or you, your audience or an oil painting? <laughs> question? Hello, how are you? Uh, hi, I had a question for Charlie. Um, I'm a fan of the Transformers series, and I want to know about your experience with the franchise. It was wonderful. It was, it, it was wonderful. It was very unexpected for me because um, there are a lot of, you know, never believe what you read and never believe what people talk about with other people was what I learned in this business. So when I got to work the first day, I had expectations to the negative about what the experience might be. And I was so wrong and I listened to so many idiots and uh, Michael Bay was the loveliest man and collaborative and funny and fun and playful and interesting and always had another idea and wanted my idea and everybody else who worked on that on those pictures on the pictures um, it was great it was a great experience were you on set for that or were you were you looping to looping to looping to almost done picture wow and what was so astonishing to me and I'm, I'm the least I can't work a toaster so for me anybody who does some of this is, is right. miraculous by the time we started some of the picture stuff we would voice but then towards the release what, what I had done had been refined technically and so we'd go to Michael Bay Studios uh, in Santa Monica and down to, and you probably would know this better than I, but down to the last detail, if you froze frame some of the artwork and the computer generated models of those uh, creatures, it was mind blowing. And I don't know anything about gigabytes or spigabytes or. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they told me the number that it was, and I just kind of said something stupid like, well, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it turned out it was like huge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. It's quite wonderful when you can work on something like that where the, uh, you know, the, the person proves you wrong. Because the press on Michael Bay is there and just cares yeah. about explosions, chases and all that. And I, love, I love the idea that he's, that he's, out of all creative people I know and respect have this, they've always got another idea. Let's try yeah, this, let's yeah. try that, and then this, and then that. Not, that doesn't work. You know, I love that. I love he's, a that he's, yeah. a big, he's a kid. He's like a big, he's like a kid. It was thrilling. Lots of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giving a lot of cards. A lot of cards. Yeah. Question? Anyone else? Canadians are very shy, Charlie. Oh, That's speak up for Canada. This is my hometown. We slept from LA. Say something. Yes. So, uh, this goes to either of you, uh, gentlemen, then. Have you ever had an experience where you're going in with uh, really positive ideas of how the process is going to be, and then it's just a complete nightmare? And if so, can you get into detail? <laughs> You know, I agree on this. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I think that when when that happens, it's not a good idea to talk about it publicly. Um, I made the mistake of of mentioning and trying to keep it as anonymous as possible. A certain director who were done on the show, and he had a very uh, rote process of directing his actors. He gave you line readings, and and I it got back to him. I thought this interview would never ever. You see any medium that this actor, that this, this director would see, and it got back to him nonetheless. And he wrote me a very heartfelt letter about how much it hurt him that I'd said that, and um, 
I felt bad, and finally at a con, he was in the audience, and I actually took a moment to make amends to him in front of as many people as possible and say that I was wrong to do that. And he came up and we hugged, and uh, I was very glad that we, we, we uh, repaired our relationship because he just recently passed away. And uh, so it's not, it's not helpful to talk about those things. They, they all happen, they happen to all of us where, you know, you do meet that, you know, I think this is gonna be great, and then, you know, the, the, it just, you know, the, the, you're, you're grinding it out, the, the, the job becomes a grind. You're either directed poorly, like the micromanagement of syllables, which is anybody's, any actor's least favorite way to be directed. I love a director who just, you know, gets me to feel what the character's feeling, tells me what the character, wants and needs in the scene or in the arc of the story and trusts me to play that, obviously, but they can't all be that way. So um, you, you, you weather those things and go, hey, I'm going to get a nice check at the end of this day. I'm going to get yeah, a check that's you know, worth what used to take me a month to make in my last real job. So F me. Uh, I'm going to work. They call it work. They don't call it yeah, it's show business, not show fun. So we're lucky when the jobs are fun, and we've been on a lot of fun jobs. We've today. been on brilliantly fun shows, but I'm, but I, I I agree with Maurice in many ways. But I only have one question yes, sir. to you about that. Did it turn out though that you were right? I don't. I, I mean, about the, your perception of the event. I think so. I think I may may have been right, but but my job is to just work with the director, I think, no matter what. That, you know? that, that's correct. I, I, but I don't think my critique of the director was wrong. That's it's, what it's I want to get to. Always a, it's, it's never a terrific thing to just tell a, a, an actor to read the same thing over and over again and read the line back to the way you want and have him ape it back. And yet, the, sh the show that we were on became a success. And uh, so, screw me. <laughs> what but, do I know? Yeah, but guys, but, but every walk of life has this. I mean, we are so overindulged and privileged in the work that we do. And everybody in this audience is subject to, most people, subject to a boss you don't like or a supervisor or rules or, I mean, how do you navigate that? You, you, you have to decide what your top priority is, how you want to navigate it, do you want to eat, do you not want to eat? Is this deeply personal? I think sometimes the only distinction that I can make about what we do, maybe, maybe, I'm not saying this is for sure, this is a maybe, is that, I'll speak for myself, my work is very, very personal to me. And so it becomes, I don't want to say it's more of an ego question, although it probably comes down to it, but it's more injurious because it feels that somebody else is messing around with me as an artist and that has always I'm more bristly than he or the rest of the world that's always been a problem for me now that I'm 170 <laughs> it's just it's a lot easier now we just gotta go who gives a shit <laughs> whatever okay fine you want it fine I'll <laughs> you like that then. <laughs> well, it, and my work is personal to me too I mean I, I, I count myself so lucky to get to do this, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of people, you know, aren't, aren't, you know, don't get as lucky as I get. So, but it's very personal. I mean, it can't be, it can't be any more personal. Personal. You're creating a character that's reaching inside of yourself and finding the things in you that, because you can't really play somebody you're not. There's a great line in my favorite year when Peter O'Toole is drunk and and and. and Broken at the end of the at the end of the thing, he won't go on on, tele, on live television, and the young man who's been like his sort of he's mentored through the picture says, "You have that hero inside of you. You couldn't play him. You're nobody's that good an actor." And so whenever an actor plays a part, he's playing some facet of himself. If you're playing a murderer, you know, you you have to reach inside of you and find that guy who could kill somebody because we're all capable of it. You know, there's, psychologists say each of us is capable of killing another human being. It's just that 99% of us restrain ourselves until the day we die. That's right. <laughs> so, it's very true. You know, um, you have to reach inside yourself. So it's all very personal. But yeah, I've, I've learned since, especially since that day and what I did to that director, uh, you just keep your mouth shut and do the job because everybody has moments where they can't stand the job. That's true. Kiff's aside, the side of Kiff Croker in Futurama. <laughs> 
comes from, we've all worked for that boss, and that's what he's got. <laughs> <sighs> you know, or it comes from, you know, being married to that person. It's really an imitation Why are you of, putting it of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's legal here, too. What? Gay marriage is legal here, too. Gay! Y -Y 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 -Y. Get up, Kif Sai actually comes from my wife and the sound she makes, which is the old me when I'm in the video. So that's where it's going to Anyway, next. Yes, Question. Um, you both worked on like, a lot of shows together in the 80s and 90s, like Transformers yes. and Tiny Toon Adventures. I was wondering, did you guys ever have fun like in the recording studio together? Never. Never, never fun. Talk to each other. It's not fun at all. No. Oh. Oh. Of course. No, we have tremendous fun. In fact, one of, what was that show? <laughs> Something the Barbarian. Uh, yes, Dave the Barbarian. Dave the Barbarian. We had a we had a day where we could not stop laughing. No, I'm still Long laughing. Enough. I was like, and so all I have to do is say, "What was that show?" And you went. Right. There's a buzzword which we can't say. Now. Yeah, but that, okay, uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah, that, yeah. that Mo came up with that leveled the room. But especially you. It, but I was gone. I really was. I went fishing and I never came back. I, I laughed through the whole day. I would, I would, my lines would come up. I was fine. I would do them. I would finish. We'd go. <laughs> they named, what was it? They named the character. Cat, Cackleen. Cackleen. And I. Doing a Scottish character. Doing a Scottish character. Uh, soften the A to, well, cock clean, what do you think we ought to And he cracks out. But it wasn't about I, that, it was the commercial he did for cock clean. Yes, I, I said, I said, you can. Uh, how many, do we have any under, under, under tens here? Do we have any little, any, little any minors here? Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, uh, cover your ears. <laughs> cover your ears. Okay, or go to do, 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 do. So I said, like cock, but hate the fat? Try new cock lead. <laughs> we were done for the day. Right? right? And that, that's all they did. That's all they did. Done. There you have it. So there we go. No, so we have no fun. No, but that's just it, though. I mean, we're. Never. It's imagine the funniest guy or gal in your work times eight. That's what we have. It's like always the funniest person that you would ever want to meet, eight of us, nine of us in the studio, cracking each other up. So in that regard, we're very, very lucky. And I just, Tourette, this gentleman's had his hand raised since 1761. Okay. <laughs> yes? Uh, I, Don't I, let him in! What? <laughs> I, uh, Charlie, I, I didn't actually go, uh, I was actually part of the uh, Cartoon Network uh, in 90s kit when I was very young in the Dexter Laboratory, Johnny Bravo. But the one show I actually really loved from your work was actually Cow and Chicken. Oh my god, right? <laughs> oh, thanks. Triple threat on Cow and Chicken. Yo, papa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I love that show. They let me be, talk about you want some cheese with that ham. I had the best time. The best time. Thank you. Well, you have a question now. Yeah, how, how fun was it to do, uh, out of all the characters, the red guy has to stand up? It's, it's very strange. I'll tell you, I keep putting my hat on and off, and I don't know who I am. Um, I love the red guy um, because he was the most hysterical, irreverent. I mean, he, his inner life was full of angst and everything was big. But my favorite character, maybe in my career to play, is Cal. Ah. Because I love innocence. Innocence yes. absolutely kills she me. Was, she was so that sweet. Was and when you're surrounded by terrible events, she's just. What the? <laughs> and yeah, all of them were fun, but cacao for me is pure bliss. Yeah. And I do love the red guy. I actually, I, I thought your, your cow and your chicken and your red guy, was, especially Iron Baboon, cracks me up every single time I watched it. Thank you. I, I couldn't actually not stop watching like. Oh, I appreciate that, because I'm very proud of that show. And, yeah. I, and, I, and it, was, it was great fun. Yeah, it came out like 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, every Sunday morning. What the hell are you doing up at that hour? <laughs> Watching cow and chicken? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Like cow and chicken, but hate the fat? I get it, Cockleen! Cockleen lives. The t-shirt, Cockleen. And uh, also, lastly, Baboon. I demand you seize that victory dance right now. I don't know how to do victory dance. <laughs> 
Ah, you are very stupid. <laughs> Michael Dorn. Oh, Michael Dorn. It was his first uh, series doing animation, and he would tell you this, and I don't want to dominate because I want no. but very, very quickly. Uh, he, <laughs> it was this, yeah, um, you can see I'm not quite well. And Michael was much more formal than I am. Or, and so he's very gentlemanly and very elegant and very lovely. And then I come in, you know, like this psychotic gypsy whore. <laughs> uh, and I'm just on fire, having a great time. And Michael was too, too formal and stiff for me. He'll tell you this. if You, you can ask him about this. I'll tell you this. And I looked at him at one point and I said, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Who do you think you are, Joan Fontaine? <laughs> Lighten up! And he started to laugh so hard, and we became <laughs> such buddies. He was, he is so brilliant and so wonderful. You know him from Star Trek, uh, whatever their names are. Uh, Warf. Warf. Yeah. What? Warf. Lieutenant Warf. So he played Lieutenant Warf on, on Warf. On and Next Generation so and in the movies, and he, he, he crossed over to another series. What's his name? Yes, How the hell do you know these things? <laughs> At an Amazon, Charlie. Oh, there's that. <laughs> All right, sit down. Dorn had a, I had a, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, 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 a Michael Dorn story as well. He, we were on a show called Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys together. Yeah. Remember Captain Simeon? So uh, it was a show ran one season, probably some of the best science fiction writing I've ever gotten a chance to perform. And then we got DC Fontana, we got uh, all these great Star Trek writers to write scripts. Gordon Bresak was the showrunner. And and uh, it was Dorn, and it was Malcolm McDowell, and it was uh, 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 James Avery. James Avery. Oh, James Preston. And at one point, and, and then on one side of the room, the, the real actors, <laughs> and uh, uh, Jerry, um, Jerry from Beat That Mafia, Jerry. Jerry Doyle. Jerry Doyle, thank you so much. Uh, and 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 then on our side is Jeff Bennett, the, and Don Herrera, stand-up comedian. But at, at one point, he's, you know, Jeff and I have a run where we're doing like three or four characters each. And Dorn looks at us and goes, wow, you guys are just like real actors. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, and I didn't care that he was tall and burly. I just looked at him and said, if you were any other man, I would kill you where you stand. <laughs> and he busted up, and that's how Michael Dorn and I became friends. <laughs> Great guy. He is a, he's a, he's an unbelievably wonderful. Yes, man. you've had your hand up since since the American Revolution. <laughs> Unbelievable. There might be another one coming. Yes. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> I think I'm going to stay here. I think I'll, 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 I'll be going in your spare room. Yeah, that's right. I'm the, one of the few people at this con that doesn't have to go get like a planet immigrant status. I'm from here. This is my home. <laughs> you mind if I from here? You can stay. You can stay in the plane closet. You. Um, a question for both of you. Yes. Along the way, what are the most unexpected things that you wound up learning? Lessons you didn't think, I, I already know what I'm doing with this. Where are, the, where are the things that you found the most unexpected learning? Most unexpected. Oh, I, I have a pretty clear answer from myself. Do you? Go yeah, ahead. You? Go ahead. No, I know. I have to think about it. Can you hear just my voice, Carrie? Um, <laughs> I had no idea. And I'm just learning it now, how much my work has meant to people. Mm. I never knew. You know, we go in, we do it. A year later it comes out, nine months later it comes out. We're on to 10 other things. I think it's because of these conventions. And I think it's because we get to get this interaction with people that Significantly, I find out that what I love to do, which would be more than enough for me, means something. And when, I, when, you're, when you're doing, when you're working in the theater, which I did a ton of, you get that immediate feedback. It, it, you, you feel it. It's there. It comes. It goes. But it's real. This, because we're so invisible, all of a sudden, year, I mean, years later, I've been doing this for thirty some odd years. I come to something like this and I go, you mean you know who I am and you care? <laughs> it's lovely. That's, that's, that's my biggest takeaway because it's very, very insular up until a lot of this stuff. And I'm very private and I, I tend to not want to leave my dogs. And uh, that's the way it is.
So that's the big lesson. Yeah, I, I'll draft on that answer. I mean, that 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 did come as a surprise. Now I've been doing these things uh, a bit longer, but I'm always touched. I, the, at least once a con, somebody comes up and tells me a story that makes me cry yeah, me about what the what the cartoons have meant to them. And, I, and I'm always careful to say, well, 187 other people were worked on that episode of Pinky the Brain, and on their behalf, I I I thank you for telling me how it got you through. When your mom died, yep. or how it got you through the bullying, yep. and and then, and all that. Uh, that that uh, that is something that, that I learned the slow way. I come from the world of just in a technique way to answer your question. I come from the world of stand-up comedy, so that's that's the most narcissistic you know thing you can do. It's you, the microphone, and it's also the most courageous thing you can do. Well, it, it is most. All right. I was driven. I was driven by a strong sense of well, somebody loved me. Whatever, but somebody loved love me. But what I and so getting into this business, I learned to give and take. I learned to listen to other actors because I went right from stand-up comedy into this. I didn't have, as my friend had, a, you know, a, a time where I was doing theater or film or anything like that. I was like, I stood there, did the impressions. You know, probably did about 60 voices in a in a 20-minute set. And if an agent came up to me from the William Morris agent and said, I just started the voiceover department and I want you to be my first, you know, signed client. Uh, my first discovery. With all those voices you can do, you can create characters. And so I got in the studio and I think I was quite selfish at the beginning and very self-involved. And I learned to listen to my fellow actors and worked and work with what we were giving me and learn about collaboration and just being there and in it. Uh, in a, in, a, in a group way. So that, that taught me to get out of myself a little bit and be a little, little, little more other directed rather than self directed. So that, that's wow. my personal problem. Yes, sir. Uh, that's too bad. That's a good question. Hmm? No, 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 you, but that is the gentleman back there with the headband is next because I. Okay, yes. I was like two long time veterans in the industry. I'm curious about. Did you say old time? <laughs> <laughs> How about long time? Okay, there we go. Well, I'm so old, Tom, I didn't hear a goddamn thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious if you guys, you've both been in the industry for a long time, if you've noticed any trends in the voice acting industry, good or bad, if you can comment on like a little bit about that over your time. Trends. Well, I've noticed that in the last 10 years or so when I'm called in, they, you know, to do a cartoon, they say, don't sound cartoony a lot. You know, don't sound cartoony. They want to go for this sort of film realism kind of a thing. And that's a bit of a trend. I don't know how well it translates. Um, you know, some cartoons take a more dramatic bent. Uh, I will always be a, a, a kind of a ham and I'll always kind of pepper it with little you know, highs and lows, but th that's 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 about it. And, and the trend. Do you want to, do, you, do you want you, were you going to address celebrity? Well, sort of, but I want to just feed on what you just said because um, now my career is directing and acting. So as a director, the trend that I see is is exactly what Mo has said, and it rarely flies. They start there because everybody wants to reinvent a wheel, uh, and that's just the way nature is, and you sort of go along with it. Um, and I don't have a problem with celebrity. I'm going to tell you why. Um, I, I don't either, by the way, surprisingly enough. Well, but I'm moderating at 3.30, and you should all come, uh, Tim Curry's uh, oh, yeah. Q&A. And I met Tim 30 years ago, and Tim walked into a show that I was on, and I was utterly blown away by his gifts there. Now, having said that, I've also had to direct a lot of Oscar winners and blah, blah, blah winners and schmancy, schmancy and celebrities. It's just like anybody else. There are brilliant people, there are not brilliant people, there are mediocre people, some people need more help than others. It's just the way it is. I don't like to indulge in the idea that things are so changing and I don't know where I fit in. Everybody's got to reinvent, guys. You're, they're reinventing the world politically, socially, morally, ethically. So what's different about it than what we do? And how is what we do any, it's just a reflection of the rest of the world. So what? It is, it is changing. But like everything else is changing. To me, eh, 
I, I, I'm too old to, to, to think or consider any of it. My bigger concerns are how do I survive <laughs> and how do I keep reinventing? Because like any artist, I think the hardest thing is the reinvention. Is your work has to change along with the world. And um, now it's social media, now it's YouTube, now it's uh, blah 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 boo and this whatever. You know what I'm saying. So I'm probably blathering on because I'm really dying for a martini. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I don't, uh, with you, I'm with you on the celebrity thing in that I believe if you've got a, you know, I'm down in the States, so if you've got an a SAG after car, you're an actor. Whether you're Tom Hanks, or whether you're Maurice LaMarche, or, or the guy just starting out, you're an actor. So all work is open to you. Probably. Um, so I don't go, oh, why are they casting celebrities on this? Why can't they just go make do their $10 million pictures and leave the scale work for us? No, it's, it's all open to us. You know, yes, in my heart of hearts, do I wish I could get a crack at some of the film work? Sure, but, you know, that's not where I put my energies. And I put my energies into this, and I love it. I've had great experiences working with on-camera actors uh, on, uh, on on shows, and they've been less than you know less than stellar. Um, nobody's ever been that nice. I'll tell you though, Mark Hamill started doing this. He, yep. You know, he did an, I, He was on um, Hannah Barbera. Stuff. He did some Hannah Barbera yeah. stuff back in '73, '74. Yeah. That you know, he's always been able to do this. He loves this. Movie. He's utterly brilliant. He goes off and does these little Star Wars pictures, <laughs> but comes right back. I mean, we were on a show called uh, uh, Transformers Rescue Bots, and he played uh, my brother, my character's brother, on the show. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, I'm a father, and he's the he's the he's the crazy world, you know, world traveling uncle. And in the middle of Star Wars, you know, uh, he came back. Of course, we found out later he didn't have a friggin' line in the entire picture. <laughs> we thought, How about that? Hamill comes all the way back here to do because he doesn't want to break the continuity of our cartoon. But he uh, he, he loves the work. He does the work. He's absolutely. And he's a joy and he's, he's a darling a person. Person. That's it. You just hit on it. The number one thing about working in our industry: always be a joy to work with. That's something I also had to learn because I thought in my stand-up comedy hubris that. My brilliance at doing all these voices would carry me through. And there was a time in my, peer, my, my, my acting career, I wasn't a joy to work with. I kind of had a little bit of a toot. And I realized, you know, you're replaceable, you're not special. It's like, it's like being, being Superman, then landing in the bottom city of Candor, and then being exposed to the yellow sun. Everybody in our community has my powers, you know? So you always be a joy to work with. If, you're, if anybody in this room is pursuing a, a career or interested in pursuing a career, Number one thing, because if it comes to the talented guy who's a pain in the ass and the talented guy who's a joy to work with, even slightly less talented guy who's a joy to work with but still has the chops, they'll go with the guy who's a joy to work with every single time. And why not carry that to any work of life? Yeah. I mean, what's the point? Who needs to suffer? The right. turd cannon will point someday when yes. you want it to or not. <laughs> so just have a damn good time. Absolutely. This gentleman back there with the headband yes. that I remember had your hand up again since the flood. <laughs> and we're not just talking about using it. Dear God. Send money. Send, send something. Money. Send five dollars. You send five dollars. Hey, if you have Southwest us. Airline frequent flyer points, you can donate them, by the way, get people out uh, to get volunteers out there to yeah, fly. That's great. So this is for Maurice. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering if you could please raise us with your absolutely fabulous Orson Welles impression. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it round and I have no more time. You don't know what I'm up against because it's full of things that are only correct because they're grammatical, but they're tough on the ear. You see, this is a very wearying one. It's unpleasant to read, unrewarding. That's my warm up for Orson Welles. I, uh, that's the frozen Bindus Frozen Foods. You know, Bindus Frozen Foods. That was an outtake from England. the Frozen Foods. Yeah, this is a five minute long tape that, uh, that uh, Phil Proctor from the Fireside Theater gave yeah. me. Um, on New Year's Eve 1984, and I learned that thing backwards and forwards. I never knew I'd have any use for it, and then this audition for the brain comes along. But um, that's what I do. I warm up with doing just that little segment of the of the tape, because that's where he goes the deepest. Hold oh, on one second. Is there somebody else with a question who hasn't asked a question? So I'm going to get somebody else go. Yes. Um, which role is the hardest to find the voice for? Which, which the one is the hardest to find? Sorry? 
Which role is the hardest to find the voice for? The next one, I don't know. Cute answer. Well, it was actually a good answer because I don't think, it's, it, it's every part has its challenges. Um, I don't think there's a hardest part or an easier part. Some I cotton to more than others, some are more thrilling than others to play, but it's not a question for me anyway of hard or not hard. And I, by the way, just to, just to revisit the question, it's never about a voice for me. It's about a character. Yep. The voice is, is, is the least important of my worries. Who they are and what is, what's the weird, whatever the weirdness is, that's where, I, that's where I go. I don't think about what it sounds like ever because that's, that does screw me up every time. It's, I don't, you know, there are a lot of people who can make great sounds and have great voices, but acting is always the basis. Right, always. It's voice, it's voice acting, not voice acting. That's it, exactly. Um, exactly. We're up also, that's I'm stealing directly well, yeah, from. He's right. I am stealing from Pinky. I can't <laughs> believe it. Um, I'll just say that, I'll just say that, add to what Charlie says, um, the hardest ones for me are ones where they give me almost nothing uh, when I'm auditioning. Uh, about what the character really wants. You know, I have to know what the characters want. That's probably the most important thing any actor needs to know about his character. And if they don't tell me what he wants, uh, or where he's been, then I'm really, you know, I'm stuck. I, I'm helped visually. If, I can, if they provide me with a model sheet of the character, I, I find that um, a, a big help. I can almost crawl up inside of him like he's a suit and put him on. That makes great sense. And, and, and try to, and try to you know, go from there. So the biggest challenges are where I have the least information. Basically. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, I'll just add a little a little something. Another challenge is when you've got you know, as I said, the kind of director that you know that just wrote wrote line. As a ten year. But when you've got a terrific director and one that knows the shorthand of an actor and approaches everything with character. And no, my thumb is not my thumb is not in a cramp right now. I'm pointing towards one of the best directors in our industry. Thank you. And this this Charlie Adler, if you're lucky you ever be on a Charlie Adler directed show. It's a joy, it's fun, he gets it. You're on the side of the actor as well as the writers over your shoulder. And sometimes I can tell when you're looking at me and they can't see you because they're back here. When I see a little eye roll, I know that it's not me and I'm okay. But yeah, absolutely. When he when we when we were we were together on a show uh, called Wabbit. And uh, for various reasons we both moved on from the show. But uh, he helped me so much. You helped me so much with that character. It's the most difficult character. You want to talk about a hard character? Yosemite Sam. And, and uh, Brutal. he, he Brutal. championed me uh, with that character. And uh, we, we, we came up with some really great material on that show. Oh, you were extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was somebody else. Wait. Go ahead. Hi. And then I'll, and then oh, I'll get I think, yes. He felt that, that Yakko was too close and too important a character to actually defy him in that way. So has there any ever been an offer like that where you said, no, I, I simply can't do it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I was asked to play uh, a, um, a swearing uh, Christ once uh, for uh, when, when, when Flash Animation first came along. There was a company called Icebox, Icebox.com. And I was on a lot of, a lot of their shows. But there was one particular show that was particularly disrespectful of, of, of Jesus. And I'm, I'm not a Christian, but I thought of all the Christians out there who may watch this and be offended and, and whatever. And, I, you know, I always, I, I, I do feel like if you're offended, it's your business. But why, why do I want to throw any gasoline on that fire? A lot of good has come out of Christianity, you know. So um, I, I, I didn't even audition for it. So there are certain things. Was that really a job offer, or was he throwing that? I mean, did somebody actually offer him money to read the Kama Sutra? Um, he, like, as, I think he couldn't recall exactly what it was. Okay. I, saw the I just like the pictures. Oh, oh, it was Robot Chicken. Well, anybody watching Robot Chicken, you know, just, just should d deserves anything they get. You're, you're signing up. I mean, there's certain shows you're. We got less than Oh, do we? Yeah. So I'm going to ask one more question. All right. And you had your hand raised. Did you have your hand raised? Yeah. For both of you guys, like, how would you feel if? Uh, Buster 
rabbit and the brain are like talking to each other. How would we feel about it? How would you feel? Come, Mustu. You must head to Akron University and recruit the entire faculty to help me take over the world. Well, that seems really, really nice, but I don't do it anywhere though, my bad. <laughs> yes, we do need our Tress McNeil. Tress McNeil! Tress McNeil! Got it. Yeah, absolutely. I Got mean, it. it's like I don't say that Tress McNeil is the best voice actress in the business. She's the best voice actor. Period. 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 She does things with one syllable that that puts you down on the floor laughing. I mean, she can clear her throat as uh, as Hattie on Futurama or the crazy cat lady on The Simpsons. Just the clearing throat sound, and you're dying. No, you should, That's yeah, how yeah. great her job is. There's are. genius, and then there's stress. Yeah, and absolutely. she's in her own. She's in her own absolute uh, world of, of brilliance. She really to, to, and one of the kindest, most remarkable yeah, beings really on the planet. A wonderful person. We, I mean, uh, uh, to paraphrase Mel Blanc, I aspire to be the male Tress McNeil someday. I hope I'm that good. So you know, I aspire to that. <laughs> Those are my aspirations. One very quick question. How much time? One more question. Hurry up! Yeah, hurry up! Thank you for paying attention to the Houston tragedy. No amount of planning could have ever got them, you know, got them to us. Thank you for saying that. But I'm just curious, what are you guys watching on TV right now? <laughs> well, go ahead. I, 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 I have a very short list. Uh, you know, obviously, Game of Thrones. Well, I don't know why, obviously, yeah. but you can tell by looking at me that I'm a big fan of Lord Peter Baelish. Um, <laughs> I, I love Game of Thrones. Um, watching, I've watched every season of House of Cards, and I and I have not caught up yet. But I, not just because I occasionally work on it. Rick and Morty is to me yeah. the most brilliant thing being made right now. Okay, my list. Ancient Aliens, <laughs> obsessed. T Turner Classic Movies, black and white movies only. Um, I do not watch any series. I haven't seen a series in, since Nurse Jackie went off the air. Um, yeah, I know, shocking. And um, uh, science and politics. And um, then I take the dogs outside and look at the sky until I pass out. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. You, what, 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 we're both signing yeah. uh, next to each other, I don't know how that is. And uh, come see the Tim Curry thing at 3.30. Come, come to that. Yeah. Yeah, but we're out there, we're going to take a quick lunch break, I'll give you time to line up and we'll see you out Thanks there. Thanks for coming, you guys. And you don't have to buy anything, just come buy yourself. But if you do buy something, we won't say that. <laughs>